hello today. I'm wearing my apron that I brought back with me as a souvenir from a trip to Oaxaca. When you're there, you see almost all the women wearing aprons very similar to this. They're very, very typical. They will be this sort of uh, jewel tone plaid with abundant embroidery, machine embroidery. And this one is actually one of the more simple versions. They all often have lots of ruffles and far more elaborate embroidery than this one. But I'm much taller than most of the women in Oaxaca. I feel like a giant when I'm there. I feel like a giant in many parts of the world, actually. And I had a really hard time finding an apron that was tall enough, long enough to fit my body. And I had a very limited selection, but if a shorter person would have, oh my goodness, so many to choose from. Anyway, I'm wearing this apron because in one of my art groups, we've been talking about Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead, which is one of the celebrations in Mexico. And I was very fortunate that the trip that I went on it, I went on a weaving trip, but it also happened to coincide with the Dia de las Muertos celebrations that year. And we were very fortunate to be able to spend the day with the weavers' families and visiting their families and having experiencing a very traditional village style celebration, which is quite different from the popular thing that you see in the movie. So I've been talking about that a lot and sharing my journal with my art groups and one of the things that I realized I don't always look at these my books is that the last page is blank and often if I have blank pages in my journals when I come home I put some sketches of some of the souvenirs things like this this apron on at the back of the book so I would like to share this book with you and show you some of the things it's actually a very sweet book and you'll see why when I show it to you and then also finish finish up with the sketch of some of the souvenirs that I, I have from the trip. The story of my trip to Oaxaca actually started some time back in the last century. In the early 1990s, I wove this little band. My weaving teacher called it a Oaxacan band. And that red fish becomes significant, not in this story, but I'm going to do a segment on my personal symbols on the red fish at some time. And at the time, I had never heard of Oaxaca, and I knew very little about Mexico in general other than the tourist resorts. Here's a Oaxacan band that I bought in Oaxaca. And I have some of the other crafts that are typical of various villages. I have these bugs that are made in the studio for quite a famous folk artist named Concepcion Aguilera. I have these little brightly painted fantastic animals. This little one at one point actually had wings, so it was a pegasus, but they've gone missing somewhere. And the black pottery that's made in another village. And now here's my sketchbook. So my sketchbooks usually start out with the airport and the airplane. My experiences on the airport and the airplane. Our, my first stop was in Oaxaca City. These are some of the images and things that I saw in a church in the old town. And, and those little bunnies in the corner there, they actually, there's a little story behind that. They, they were a decoration that was in, the, in our hotel dining room. But a few months before I went to Oaxaca, I met a fellow while I was sketching and he told me that he was from Oaxaca and he said, oh yeah, you'll really love it there. It's so free. And then the next thing that he said just really surprised me. He says, yep, you can just take a gun and shoot a rabbit for dinner. When I saw the rabbit statues in the hotel, I had to draw them. How could I not draw them? <laughs> And on this page, I on one side, there's the view from my hotel room window. It looked into an interior courtyard. And on the other side, there's an artifact. It's a jaguar woman that was on display at a site called Monte Alban, which is just outside Oaxaca City. And this site has many sort of giant pyramid type shapes, which I'm told were the base for the temples which sat on top. And now one thing that you'll start to notice, I, I do write down things that I hear people saying. So there's lots of quotes. 
On this page, there are more of the artifacts that they had at Monte Alban and a replica that I felt that I needed to buy and bring home with me. I will chalk that up to one of those unfortunate trip purchases that seemed important at the time. In this particular book, there's also the names of many things written in Spanish, and there I'll tell you about that in later. The next page moves into the village of Teotitlan. This is the weaving village that where we stayed, and that was the whole purpose of the trip. And you see the church, the Facebook of olden days, the village market, where you can see the women wearing their aprons like the one that I have, and the calavera, something that was at a mezcal tasting place. The next page, there's the view from my room in Teotitlan, and you'll see that there are mountains, and I'll tell you why they're important later on. There are also some of the weaving tools, the loom, the shuttle, and a comb, all with their Spanish names. There's another one of the rugs that is very typical of the style of things. Some more mezcal tasting with some little cups that are also made in one particular village. Now on this page, there are more, more images from around the place where we're staying. And Baby Caramello, which was drawn for me by a little girl named Maria. And she was about six or seven years old. And here's another picture that she drew for me. And at the bottom, you can see it says, Telar y Don Trabajando, which means the loom and Don working hard. <laughs> and on the other side, it's another typical topic for some of the rugs in this village, the tree of life with the birds on it. But this little girl, Maria, was just such a sweetheart. She was about six or seven years old, and she really wanted to talk to me, but she didn't speak English, and I don't speak Spanish. So she decided she was going to teach me how to speak Spanish by teaching me the names of all the words of the things that I'd drawn in my book. So she started out having me write down the names, but I was no good at spelling. And at some point, she just took the book away from me and started writing it herself, which I just thought was charming. And there, there's some more of the typical Oaxacan or Zapotec shapes that you see in some of the archaeological sites. And on this page, there is an altar that Maria had made for us now around the Day, day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. It's very common for people, Catholic people, to set up altars that commemorate their loved ones who have passed. And here we are. This is the group of us after our evening of experiencing a Dia de los Muertos Teotitlan style, which involved visiting many relatives, drinking much mezcal and beer, and occasionally chocolate and a bit of bread. So the conversation was <clears throat> quite interesting. And then the next day we visited the, we went to the village where they make the black pottery, the wood carvings, saw some women doing backstrap weaving with, with interestingly, with a rigid heddle, which I was surprised to see. And then we went to another village where people compete to decorate their graves to see who can create the most, the most elaborate display. And then there's my last dinner in Oaxaca was Dos Equis with lime and worm salt. Yeah, the little red bits. Uh, it's like a seasoned salt with worms crushed up in it. And the last page, of course, was the trip home, more airport, airplane, and it's great people watching. And then I've got my last empty page here that I can sketch some of my souvenirs. So they're not all going to fit. I mean, I brought back lots of stuff, but I really, I want to, I want to include the rug that I've woven and some of the the, the crafts that I picked up in some of the villages. So I'm going to first, and this is very typical, when I travel, I take a very small kit. So it's just a black fine liner, black or dark brown fine liner, and some watercolors in a tin, and I'll pull those out in a minute. But first I do a sketch off whatever I'm drawing with the back black fine liner. And quite often I will create almost like a mosaic or collage off my sketches. I'll draw things in and then I'll add more in behind in the empty spaces. So I'm starting out with some of these little critters that I brought back. And, and I'm not really going for accuracy. I'm just drawing a suggestion of what I see. 
and I'm not really worrying if it's exactly what I see as long as it's pretty close and and I can tell what it's supposed to be representing. So none of these are exact and this this first layer is pretty rough and it's just to give me a guideline for where where I want to place things. And after I've put some of these these creatures in around the outside and of course I can't forget the Oaxacan band. It was my interest in these bands that took me to Oaxaca in the first place. And then once I've got the basics in, I'm going to switch over to my little tin of watercolor paint. And it's just a, a mint tin. And I've squeezed I've squeezed the paints from from the tubes and let them dry and they stay they stay put pretty well and I use a water brush so there's water in the handle of my brush so I don't have to carry any water with me and it's all contained and I've taken water brushes on many 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 flights in my hand luggage and it's never been questioned no one's ever stopped me or even asked me about them and I'm just going in and adding the first layer of color and I I don't know why in the world did I start with black that it usually works a lot better if you start with a lighter color and work up to the darkest color because the dark colors will because I only have the one brush unless I clean my brush really well the the dark colors can really kind of alter the lighter colors where the lighter colors don't tend to alter the dark colors if I'd started in that direction and I'm really starting to realize the limits of my palette here. I do not have that uh, a beautiful bright blue that I see on that little horse. So I'm going to have to think about how I'm going to deal with those deal with those colors later. Hmm. Yeah, it's not working very well, but we'll see what happens. And I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to layer those really bright spots on top of that spider. So we'll I'll have to think about how I'm going to do that. So I don't think the watercolors are going to work very well. And then the next thing I'm doing, now what I'm doing is I'm mapping in the rug that's sitting in behind those objects, filling in that empty space in the middle, and I'm just roughly doing it. Normally when I sketch, I sketch from life, but I did not get my rug out for this particular sketch. So I'm sketching from a photo on my computer that's on um, that's sitting just in front of me there. And I'm just roughly mapping in the shapes. Now, the rug that I wove is a tapestry and it's not, I did not want to recreate the types of rugs that the people in Teotitlan weave and they, they do very specific designs. A lot of them are based on the symbols that they see in their their archaeological sites. But I, I didn't want to recreate or copy the types of rugs that they w wove. So instead, I decided to create a rug that was really the story of my trip. And I included elements of things that I saw during the trip. And now I've realized that I've run into a problem. The red part of the rug is start, starting to compete with the red band that I chose. And so, you know, I have some other bands and maybe if I planned it in advance I might have chosen a different color but that's not really the way that my my sketches develop because because I'm often sketching at different times and I've drawn those things in and then I choose the next thing and the next thing and they just build up I often have to do problem solving like this and truthfully I prefer that to planning everything out in advance and then just the creation part, the the actual drawing and painting just becomes about the mechanical process of filling in what I've already planned. I like to plan as I go, so I don't have a problem with figure, ha, you know, having to figure out later on how to deal with the competing reds over there. And I'm also thinking that the blues in my kit are not really great for, for are not a really great match for the color that was in my rug and I only have the one water brush at the at the moment because my others have all gone astray and it's got a really fine nib so it's not the best for filling in big areas like this but yeah maybe maybe it actually is not bad because it actually kind of gives the the kind of modeled sort of 
not flat like the textured look that you, the the weaving actually has because the yarns were kind of not completely uniform there was a lot of variety in the colors there was some textural variety and sort of variations in the colors off the yarns so maybe that that kind of blotchy look actually is um is is a good match for for the subject matter that's my story and I'm sticking with it <laughs> anyway but I'm really thinking about how am I going to finish this because I don't think the watercolor paints are going to do it I'm going to have to bring in some other other mark making other coloring tools to layer on top to beef up some of the colors to make them a little bit brighter and also how in the world am I going to get all those bright spots on top of my my spider there that's a little bit of a dilemma I'm going to have to figure that out and the horse is getting a little bit dull as well hmm. what am I going to do about that let's see and I'm realizing because I I made this sketchbook quite a few years ago this is not watercolor paper that I'm working on I think this is mixed media paper so some of those places where the color got dark I tried to lift out some of the color and it did not come it's there it's not moving so to work with that as well so lately I have been working with pencil crayon pencil crayon is probably one of my least favorite coloring tools but I think it might actually work here it certainly did help to beef up the color in the blue colors and in some of the pieces now I'm using it on the band to try to to create the variation in colors but that's not working so well so the pencil crown is working to modify the colors but not to add another color on top and now I'm dealing with how to create separation between the similar colors the black off the spider or actually gray off the spider I think I use Payne's gray against the blue background I've gone to a white gel pen and the white gel pen is also doing a good job on that horse creating those little white dots that were in the original and I, that's really satisfying and I think that the spider is working out but the gel pens did not really did not really pop when I tried to use them to create those really bright spots and marks on the spider so I had to rethink that and decided to use my acrylic paint pens instead and they seem to be working better although there was a lot of fiddling this 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 project took a couple of hours it was quite a bit longer than this video suggests but it I I fiddled around a lot but I think in the end it turned out quite well but you know <laughs> here's the thing I just realized there is a yellow stripe around the neck of that spider that I did not see in the entire time that I was drawing and painting it I did not notice that there was a yellow stripe there at all and so as I'm working here you'll notice that it does not get a yellow stripe but I think I'm gonna have to go back in and add that because now that I saw it I think it needs to be there and I don't know if this happens to other people but this has happened to me before well I'll be drawing a scene and I'll be well into it I'll have drawn I've been drawing it I've painted it and then I'll notice there's for example this actually happened there's a giant garbage can in the middle of the scene that I had not seen that I had not noticed there are just some things that my brain just edits out so I think that that spider's looking not bad now but I think that I need now that I have put all that other color on it needs it needs more black the black has certainly started to get washed out so I'm going to add a little bit more black so that's the thing about mixed media art you can use whichever tool it is that's going to help you to tell the story you want and I think most of for the most part things turned out pretty well and so here's some detail shots and there's there's my little horse I, I added the, the other bug in the upper right corner there's the close-up of the bug there's the spider and here's how it looks and here's the band yeah I think I do need to go back and do more work with the the band the woven band there 
And there's the black pottery, the bracelet, and the little bird whistle. Yeah, it's not just a little statue, it's actually a working whistle. And there, and there's the rug in the background with uh, the photograph of the rug that I took while I was in Teotitlan. Well, I'm really happy that now I have finished up that book and it's another finished project. Yay, me!